The shutdown and budget ceiling crisis. Uh, Steve Francisco, when the federal government had a partial shutdown in October, uh, who or what stopped working? Well, basically about 800,000 federal employees who were deemed to be so-called non-essential federal employees were laid off from their jobs. Uh, these were people who were working in the various agencies of the federal government. Workers who were deemed essential were mm -hmm. our military, law enforcement personnel, and others. But practically all Americans were affected by this government shutdown. Um, if you tried to go to a national park, you found that the park was closed. Mm -hmm. If you are calling federal agencies with particular questions, you may have found that it took longer to get your phone call answered or nobody answered it because the people who would have have been mm -hmm. furloughed. And so about 800,000 federal workers, and frankly, people in many other states that had a lot more federal installations mm -hmm. were affected in a much bigger way than we were here in Minnesota. But even here in Minnesota, we had thousands of federal employees who were furloughed during the shutdown. So who was he, he was Im impacted? Uh, I mean, the, the workers who were furloughed were, were impacted. Uh, who else? Who was, who was impacted well, by, actually by the fact a, that they were? Yeah, quite a few people were. Um, I was looking at some statistics that talked about uh, what the shutdown cost, and it wasn't just to federal employees who temporarily lost their wages. Congress is going to retroactively pay them for the salary and wages that they lost, but some of the costs of the shutdown were not recoverable. For example, um, and it was estimated that about $76 million a day that would have been spent by visitors to our national parks mm. was lost. Another estimate from the U.S. Travel Association is that $152 million a day was lost from uh, Americans who didn't travel to visit those parks or to visit other historic sites. And then there was $217 million a day lost to federal contractors in, in the form of wages and expenses that they would have recovered. If I were a federal worker uh, and I was furloughed or about to be furloughed or concerned about being furloughed. Uh, I wouldn't go out and buy a, buy a house. I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy a car. Uh, That's right. I wouldn't buy a refrigerator or a freezer unless I absolutely had to. I wouldn't travel. Yeah. Uh, the whole travel. I, I wouldn't go out I wouldn't go out to Applebee's or to the uh, local restaurant. To, to, well, to, that's, to, to a local yeah, restaurant. that's a good point. It, there it, are a it, lot of multiplier effects yeah. when the government shut it, down. It, it slowed down the economy. And actually, uh, Standard and Poor's has estimated that the total cost of the shutdown to our economy was about twenty-four billion dollars for the government being shut down for sixteen days. And what that means is that cut fourth quarter gross domestic product product growth from 3% to 2.4%. Now you may think that doesn't sound like a big number, uh, six-tenths of 1%, but remember we're talking about an economy that's a $15 trillion yeah. economy. So this had real consequences for people to shut the government down for 16 days. So that 24 figure that you mentioned, that was billion? A billion. With, with a B. With a B. With a B, lots of money. Uh, Steve, uh, what, what uh, happened with this uh, budget ceiling crisis. You, what, what is a budget ceiling right. and, and what happens if that is Well, basically inadequate? it goes back to a federal law called the Budget Control Act that requires the Congress and the administration, the president, to come to an agreement about overall spending for the coming fiscal year. The reality that we're living in is that the president and the Congress are so far apart, particularly mm -hmm. the administration and the Republican-controlled House are so far apart on spending that it's very difficult for them to come to an agreement. And what we're talking about here when we talk about a budget ceiling, it basically is a ceiling on how much money can be spent for so-called discretionary spending. Yes. Discretionary spending is not the same as Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Those are the so-called entitlements that don't depend upon Congress to pass annual appropriations mm -hmm. bills. But we're talking about bills that require an annual appropriation to be able to spend money. Many of those are things like medical research, affordable mm -hmm. housing programs, support for K through 12 education, other types of programs like that that again require an annual bill passed by the Congress and signed by the President. Now, the 
Democrats in the Senate under Patty Murray, the Senate Democratic Chair of the Budget Committee, passed a budget resolution that actually called for cuts in domestic spending, but put us on a longer-term trajectory to reduce long-term debts and deficits. Mm -hmm. And the Republicans in the House, led by Congressman Paul Ryan, the chairman of the House Budget Committee, he wants over $5 billion in budget cuts over the next 10 years. Excuse me, not $5 billion, $5 trillion, which would yeah. basically eliminate okay whole areas of federal spending for important domestic priorities. And for more on this subject, our, our viewers can go to aarp.org, O-R-G, or to retiredamericans.org.